guys and welcome to another calculus video. In this video we're going to be taking on or we're going to be doing all the solutions to the MIT integration B2024, all the semifinals problems including all the tiebreakers. So let's go ahead and jump right into it because this is going to be a lot of problems. So first of all we have the problem number one which is this nice integral from negative infinity to infinity of x cubed minus 4x times sine x plus 3x squared minus 4 times cosine of x over this nasty denominator. Now immediately we can tell that um, this right part is just the derivative of the left part, left part, so we're looking at some product rule. However, this sine x and cosine of x don't match up exactly um, in terms of setting up a nice little product rule situation. So what we actually are going to have to do here, especially to deal with what's on the bottom, um, after going through a few different options, I decided it was best to multiply by secant squared on the top and bottom. So we end up with x cubed minus 4x times secant x tangent x plus 3x squared minus 4 times secant x, and then we have x cubed minus 4x secant x all squared plus 1. And this actually is the derivative of x cubed minus 4x times secant x, so we can write it like this. Now notice I didn't make the substitution here, because this is a really complicated function, and so we can't make a substitution directly because the function isn't only increasing or decreasing on the domain, it actually does a lot of weird stuff. So I've gone ahead and graphed the, the basic uh, idea of two functions. Um, the main important thing right here is the location of the zeros of x cubed minus 4x and where it's positive and negative and the location of the poles of secant x. So notably, if we look at the poles of secant x that are of interest, we have one at pi over 2 and minus pi over 2. And both of these occur before we get a 0 in x cubed minus 4x. So notice this one happens when x cubed minus 4x is positive, and this one over here happens when x cubed minus 4x is negative. And then, um, at our next pole, and then uh, after that, x cubed minus 4x goes ahead and changes sign. And by the time we get to our next pole, we're now um, where x cubed minus 4x is positive. And we can say a similar thing on the, on the negative side. And the important thing right here is that in this region over here, f goes from positive pi over 2 at negative 3 pi over 2, which is over here, or from, from positive infinity at negative 3 pi over 2, which is over here, to um, negative infinity at negative pi over 2, which is over here, because it changes sign right here at this 0 before it reaches this pole of secant x. Then it jumps, loops back up to positive infinity over here. And then after it loops back up to positive infinity, it changes sign as we hit 0, and then it goes all the way down to negative infinity. So we end up going from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. We go The function goes from positive infinity to negative infinity again. And then once we leave here, we get to this other zero, and as you can see here, we're going to be at positive infinity because we're negative in this function and negative in this function as well. And then it changes sign at this zero before it reaches um, this pole over here, at which point it'll be going to negative infinity again. So between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, it goes from positive infinity to negative infinity. So it does this three times overall, which means that we're essentially integrating as this function as u goes from negative infinity or from positive infinity to negative infinity three times so we can th do three times the integral from positive infinity to negative infinity of du over u squared plus one and notably everywhere outside of this region f goes from positive infinity back to positive infinity and from negative infinity back to negative infinity because of the way that the zeros of secant x work or the poles of secant x sorry so it's never actually going to be accumulating any value over those integrals because of the poles of secant x, it goes from positive infinity back up to positive infinity, which means that that integral is going to start and end at the same place and just go in the same direction, which means that all those integrals are zero. Also, we don't have to worry about any Cauchy principal values because the function that's diverging is in the denominator here. So only these three integrals will, will contribute to the value of the integral, and our final answer will be negative 3 pi. A little bit of a tricky one for problem one, but problem two is a little bit refreshing. All we have to do here is expand e to the negative x plus 1 as a power series in e to the negative x. We get this right here, and after u equals n plus 2x, giving us this integral, we get this right here. And if we rearrange these terms, it's pretty clear to see that this is just 1 minus eta of 2. And eta of 2 is just 1 half times zeta of 2, which is 1, which is pi squared over 12. Problem number 3 right here, pretty clearly we're going to have to substitute u equals tangent x and we get sine of 1 over u squared du. Now the fastest method to a solution right here is to substitute u equals v to the negative 1 half, and then immediately apply the Mellon transform of the sine function, which will give you an answer in seconds like that. 
However, if you're not familiar with the Mellon transform, you're not lost yet. If you substitute u equals 1 over v instead, you get sine v squared over v squared, which is ripe for using Feynman's trick right here. So we substitute an alpha in the numerator here. We differentiate with respect to alpha, and this gives us cosine of alpha v squared, which equals 1 half square root pi over 2 alpha. Important to know the values of the Fresnel integrals for this. And then integrating this, we just get um, pi alpha over root 2. And notice that i of 0 is 0, so this c is going to be 0. And overall, when we set alpha equal to 1 to give us our original integral, we get i equals square root pi over 2. And that's it for that integral. This one, honestly, was just annoying. We just have to manipul manipulate uh, hyperbolic trig identities. Now, note that I, I definitely didn't have these memorized when I went ahead and tried to solve these problems along with the competitors, but these identities are super easy to derive just by squaring and cubing uh, cosh of x. So we're going to use these two identities right here. First, we're going to apply the double angle identity, which can allow us to split cosh squared of 3x into 1 half and 1 half cosh of 6x. So this first integral on the left is super easy after substituting natural or after substituting cosh of 2x. And on the right here, we're going to use the cosh of 3x formula here. In this case, we have 6x, so really it's 2 times 3 of x times 3x. So um, from here, we can just proceed and um, split this into sine h 2x times cosh squared of 2x minus 3 half sine h of 2x. Uh, because we have a cosh of 2x in the denominator here. And integrating these using u substitution is really straightforward. The answer given by MIT is uh, a different different answer for the integral, but it's equivalent. Um, we just use different trig identities, or hyperbolic trig identities. So tiebreakers problem one is pretty straightforward. This is just standard integration. So I'm just going to go ahead and sort of glaze over this a little bit. We're going to do integration by parts, integrating secant squared and differentiating secant cubed. We do all this math and stuff, blah, 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 blah. We replace tangent squared of x with secant squared of x minus 1. And this allows us to recover our original integral i. So we have minus 3i here. We add 4i, or we add 3i to both sides, and we get 4i equals secant cubed of x tan of x plus 3 halves secant x tan x plus 3 halves natural log of secant x plus tangent x. And I'm using the fact here that the integral of secant cubed of x is 1 half secant x tangent x plus 1 half natural log of secant x plus tangent x giving us this final answer right here. For tiebreakers problem two, we actually go ha have to go ahead and apply Glasser's master theorem, which basically states that if we have an integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of ax plus b minus a1 over x minus b1 minus a2 over x minus b2 and so on and so forth, as long as a and a1 and a2 and all those other numbers are greater than zero, this is the same as the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of ax dx. And note that we do have to place a Cauchy principle value here, but that doesn't actually really matter when we're integrating hyperbolic secant. So overall, we're going to end up with the integral from negative infinity to infinity of secant, hyperbolic secant of 2x. After substituting u equals 2x, we get this integral right here. We can multiply by e to the x on the top and bottom, and then substitute u equals e to the x to get inverse tangent of e to the x, which will give us a final answer of pi over 2. Now here's a, a nice fun one, kind of similar to the Borwein integrals. There's a lot of different ways to tackle this problem, so here's one of the easier ones in my opinion. Using our uh, product to sum formulas, we can combine this sine x and sine 2x into cosine x minus cosine 3x times 1 half. And then we can do the same uh, product to sum formulas with sine of 3x and cosine of x and sine of 3x and cosine 3x, which gives us three, these three sine of x's in the top and bottom or in the top and x cubed on the bottom. Now we're going to use one of the most powerful tools in integration, which says that the integral from 0 to infinity of f of x g of x dx equals the Laplace transform of f of x times the inverse Laplace transform of g of x. So in this case, we're going to take sine of mi minus sine of 6x plus sine of 4x plus sine of 2x to be f of x, meaning we just take the Laplace transform using the rule sine of ax the Laplace transform of sine of ax is a over x squared plus a squared. Now notice that I didn't change the name of the variable here. Technically I should have a function of t over here and a function of s over here, but because of the way this function, uh, this identity works, we just leave it as x. And then our g of x is going to be 1 over x cubed, which when you take the inverse Laplace transform becomes x squared over 2. So when we apply this transformation, we end up with this rational integral right here. For this, we add and subtract um, 
constants in the in the numerators of all of these to get these factors these uh, terms out here that cancel and then we just get these arctangent integrals which can be very very easily evaluated and our final answer comes out to just being pi now here's a bit of a fun one we have 1 plus log of x times 1 plus log log of x dx now once we expand this out we get a bunch of nasty log terms and there's lots of arrows here but don't worry about them for now when solving this problem I figured first of all, all I, what I need to worry about is the integral of this log x log log of x term and maybe some of these other terms will cancel once I sort of figure that out so in order to get this the only thing that I can differentiate to get this right here is if I differentiate x log x log log of x and when you differentiate that it turns out that we get this term which is right here we get log log of x which is actually this term right here and we get an additional plus one which is this term right here so we got three out of four of the terms we need so we just need to add the integral of this function right here which is log x which is just x log x minus x using integration by parts so our final answer is x log log x log log of x plus x log x minus x now here is in my opinion the most brutal problem in the MIT integration B semifinals and probably save for the last problem in the finals honestly the hardest problem in the integration B overall now first of all I want to say that my solution for this is not the best so this is the solution right here but here's a bit of a quicker solution um, by rewriting this as a double integral we can go ahead and exchange the order of integration so notice that integral from 0 to infinity of t e to the negative t x squared plus 1 half gives us uh, 1 over x squared plus 1 half squared then we exchange the order of integration we integrate with respect to x first and we get this really nasty looking integral integral from 0 to infinity of t over square root 1 plus t e to the negative t over 2 dt now I actually got to this step when I was trying to solve this integral but I thought that this integral wasn't solvable wasn't really easily solvable so I went ahead and tried a different method but it turns out if you add and subtract 1 in the numerator here you actually get a really nice product rule expression right here so we can just integrate this directly with our uh, integral being negative 2 square root 1 plus t e to the negative t over 2 evaluated at infinity and 0 giving us our final answer of root pi however my method involved a relatively actually I want to say obscure but this identity actually shows up in a lot of different problems so I think it's it's something that I just had memorized and I think it's something that should be memorized if you plan on doing an integration b uh, so it's this function i of a which is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative a x squared over x squared plus 1 dx and this is equal to pi over 2 e to the a times the complementary error function of square root a now the complementary error function is the is 2 over root pi times the integral from x to infinity of e to the negative v squared dv in order to prove this we just differentiate use Feynman's trick and set up a differential equation you can see the proof right here but I'm not going to go over that I'm going to go over our solution to the actual integral right here so I we're, we define a function i of b which equals the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x squared over x squared plus b dx we let x equals root b times v and we get 1 over root b times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative b v squared over v squared plus 1 dv now this expression is what we just solved uh, the, the formula that I just showed you so we can go ahead and substitute that in now if we calculate i prime of b notice that we get negative integral from 0 to infinity e to the negative x squared uh, e to the negative x squared over b plus x squared squared dx so if we plug in b equals 1 half and then multiply by negative 1 we'll get back our original integral so calculating the derivative of this is so really annoying because we have to use product rule but this ends up being the derivative right here and it turns out once you plug in b equals 1 half these two terms that have the error function in it actually completely cancel and we don't need to worry about them at all so that's something really interesting about this is that if b were anything other than 1 half there would be error functions in the integral but because b was 1 half these two cancel and we just end up with this last residual term which when you cancel out all the extra constants turns out to be square root pi again probably one of the hardest integrals in the b because it's just so tough to know to use some formula like this or to find this weird product rule trick in this integral over here uh, problem number four is another nice little pr uh, product rule problem now uh, something that I think is really important whenever you're doing product rule whenever you have one of these e to the 2 cosine x's thing you know that everything in your integral is going to be multiplied by e to the 2 cosine x so it's actually possible to set up a differential equation to solve for the problem and I think that actually would have been the fastest method here but instead what I did was I um, expanded out cosine 2x um, 
as 2 cosine squared of x minus 1, and then I multiplied secant squared of x. Then I expanded these into two separate integrals, and I noticed that I can rewrite this one as negative secant x times minus 2 sine x. And minus 2 sine x is actually the derivative of e to the, of uh, uh, 2 cosine x. So that means I can do integration by parts on this, integrating negative 2 sine x e to the 2 cosine x, and differentiating negative secant x. And I end up with this integral right here, which when I combine it with um, the other part of the integral that we separated out here, actually cancels, uh, or not cancels, but lines up very, very nicely with, um, with the derivatives here. So notice if we, set, uh, if we put in minus secant squared of x over 2, when we differentiate this, we actually get this term right here. And uh, when we multiply by minus 2 sine x, we get this term right here. And so you just have to sort of match those two up. And you'll find that from the product rule, minus secant squared of x over 2 times e to the 2 cosine x is going to be your answer, in addition to this other term that we derived earlier. So product rule integrals can be really, really tough. But in general, you can sort of just play around with them until you get the right answer. And that'll pretty much work out no matter what you do. Oops. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the solutions to these awesome problems from the MIT Integration Fee. Feel free to suggest new problems in the comments or on my Discord, and go check out my video on the solutions to the finals of the MIT Integration Bee if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Bye.